receptive to the Spirit of God. Hmm? And they can be more considerate of the servants of God than God's own people. But anyway, so here he is. He's there lying down, trying to rest, and something is coming to him. What is coming to him? It is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is coming to him because God is wanting to reward this woman for her obedience, for her desire to provide for the servant of God, and for her willingness to do that. Okay? I mean, her husband could have screamed at her and said, shut up, what do you want to do, have an affair with that guy? Huh? I mean, he could have. But she approached her husband in such a way that he respected her wishes and the room was built. Because here, the next sentence we have, one day he came and turned into the chamber and lay there. So Elisha was in that room that had been by her uh, pleading for that provision. So going on, it says, And he said to Gehazi, a servant, Call this Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to Gehazi, Say now to her, you have been most painstakingly and reverently concerned for us. What is to be done for you? Would you like to be spoken for to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. They are sufficient. Later Elisha said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, She has no child and her husband is old. He said, Call her. Gehazi called her. And she stood in the doorway. So here, this is the second time that she's been called, been uh, beckoned to come to the chamber. Elisha said, at this season, when the time comes around, you shall embrace us. No, my Lord, you man of God, do not lie to your handmaid. But the woman conceived and bore a son at that season the following year, as Elisha had said to her. When the child had grown, he went out one day, He went out one day to his father with the reapers. But he said to his father, My head, my head. The man said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he was brought to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the, on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may go quickly to the man of God and come back again. And he said to her, and he said, Why go to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, It will be all right. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Ride fast, do not slacken your pace for me unless I tell you. So we see that the gift of God, or the son, as this child was, was smitten. Something transpired in its head. Uh, it died, and of course she wanted it laid upon the bed of the man of God, put the body there, and then she's going to find the man of God. So what do we see about this woman is number one, she was willing to serve, even though she was wealthy, even though she had everything in her life that would made her uh, appreciated as prosperous. She was willing to serve the servant of God. And because she was willing to serve the servant of God and even to put herself in a position whereby her virtue could have been questioned as to why she wanted a separate room for some guy that was a wayfaring stranger always traveling through. She went beyond that and she did what the Holy Spirit was guiding her to do in order to make a natural provision for this man of God. So not only did she see that he was fed, but also that he had a place where he could pray and uh, rest his body from the weariness of journeying. So she was in a servant's mind, a servant's attitude. And then the first thing she did when her child died was she went and laid him on the bed of the servant of God because she believed truly that Elisha was the servant of God. And she knew that God was able in the sense that she recognized the fact that God could do things that humankind couldn't do because that's how she had been given the very child who died was by the impossibility of God.
Hmm? What's impossible with men is possible with God. So she was attentive to all of these things, even in her hour of great loss and great grief. And she made up her mind she's going to go get the servant of God and get him as fast as she can in this situation. So you see, she's trusting even in the face of death that God will move. That God will move. For one thing, the very fact that she's, what does it say here? And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. It does and they prepared him for burial. Or that she called her neighbors and they put up a wailing of lamentation and sorrow and grief for this child who had passed away. It says she laid him on the bed of the, of the man of God and shut the door and took off. Or went to tell her husband what she was going to do because she's going to get the servant of God. So what is she doing? She's proving through her actions huh, that she believes in God even in the face of death. She could have said, well, the Lord lives, I mean, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And she could have folded her hands and grieved and then called her servants to prepare the boy for her burial. But you know what? This woman was believing in the supernatural gift of God. This child was her supernatural gift. This was not because she was able to conceive, because obviously she had been married to this husband for a long time. It was because God gave her the gift of that child. So she was still trusting that child to God. Now, unbelieving believers, you know, people say, well, God, uh, God gave to America the greatest revelations. God gave to America the greatest wealth. God gave to America the greatest... Uh, potential of expanding the gospel. God gave, God gave, God gave. God even founded America to be a Christian nation. God this, God that, God this. But you know what? At the first real threat of demolishing what God gave, in other words, death to the nation, where are most believers? Are they saying, God gave me this and if it dies, I'm still going to trust it to God? She said, after the kid's dead, I'm going to get the servant of God. Not when the thing was even sick and dying and going down like this nation is. She said, after it was dead, I'm going to get the servant of God. Are we still trusting and believing God that he is able? Are we trusting the agenda of the elite? Are we trusting the, the serious, horrendous, mad and insane laws that Obama's passing? Are we trusting Bayrak more than Jesus Christ? Huh? Are we looking at his evil and quivering and shivering over the Almighty God? This woman is a testimony of faith. Hmm? She said after the boy died, she put him on the bed, she got ready to go, and she took off. To find what? To find the man of God. The one that she knew was close to God, could get through to God, and would get the answer from God. So then, as it goes on here, she says, So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her afar off, he said to Gehazi, a servant, Behold, yonder is that Shunammite. Run to meet her and say, Is it well with you, well with your husband, well with the child? She answered, It is well. When she came to the mountain, to the man of God, she clung to his feet. This is a wealthy woman. This is a woman of position and power. This is a woman who has servants under her, I am sure. And here she is throwing herself down at the feet of this, you might say, destitute prophet who is dependent upon God moving upon people for his natural provision. And she throws herself down at his feet. So what does she do? Not only is she a servant, not only is she willing to believe, not only is she trusting in the face of death, but she's willing to humble herself at the feet of the man of God. Throw herself down at his feet. And Gehazi uh, says, came to thrust her away, but the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is bitter and vexed within her, and the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. 
Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? up your loins and take my staff in your hand and go lay my staff on the face of the child. If you meet any man, do not salute him. If he salutes you, do not answer him. The mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as my soul lives, I will not leave you. And he arose and followed her. Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff on the child's face, but the boy neither spoke nor heard. He went back to meet Elisha and said to him, The child was not awakened. When Elisha arrived in the house, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. So he went in, shut the door on the two of them and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and lay on the child, put his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. And as he stretched himself on him and embraced him, the child's flesh became warm. What is that a sign of? What is that a picture of? What is that an indication for us who believe, for us who want to see God move, for us who are trying to intercede, as God says, in repentance revolution. That if we will put our whole being into it, if we will literally lay ourselves in the spirit of and come to life again. Huh? What is God trying to get through to us today? Keep on believing, keep on trusting, because He is able. This child was dead. Probably by now several hours dead. And the man of God went in there, shut the door, and put himself totally in to the project at hand. Laid right on top of a dead body. Huh? Right on top of a dead body, put his mouth on the child's mouth, his eyes on the child's eyes. And what does it say? It says, And as he stretched himself on him and embraced him, the child's flesh became warm. So what did he do? He, he totally gave himself over to the intercession for that child. And that child was already dead. That child was already dead. Are we going to give up in repentance revolution? Are we going to say, oh, it's inevitable that the agenda of the elite will be fulfilled? Or are we going to believe for God to be able to do the impossible because he is able? Are we going to believe as we will do as this servant of God did and put ourselves fully into it and put ourselves in the place of life over the dead that the dead can be raised to life again? Huh? That the Christian roots that are here can come to life again and men and women can get into full-scale repentance, revolution, turn from their wicked ways, rise up in the authority and the power of God and cast out the workers of witchcraft and see our God prevail. I'm going to keep hoping. I'm going to keep hoping and I'm going to keep believing because God is able. God is able and he's the one that we should look to. This, this whole thing was nothing but a death trip. The woman with the dead kid, the prophet facing the dead body, it was a death trip. It was all death. And their life came forth because of what? Belief in God. Belief and trust in God. And then it says, then he returned and walked in the house uh, to and fro and went up again and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and then opened his eyes. Then Elisha called Gehazi and said, Call the Shunammite. So he called her, and when she came, he said, Take up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing herself to the ground. Then she took up her son and went out. So see, even at that, the woman finished it right. She finished it with thanks to God. She finished it with oblation to God. And she finished it in humility, rather than just merely grabbing her son. She fell at the feet of the prophet, giving thanks, and then received her son. Are we giving thanks? Are we humbling ourselves? Are we believing for the dead to be raised to life again? Amen. I speak unto thee this day. I say, do not doubt me, but believe me. For I say that I, the living God, am able. And I say, when you will be believing in me, so shall you see my miracles revealed. For I say it is me, the living God alone of all the gods.